All right, welcome to Life on the Rock. I'm Doug Barry, along with Father Mark. No, Father Mark is not here. I'm with Father Anthony. It's good to be with you again, Doug. <laughs> good to see you, Father. <laughs> Father Mark is not with us right now. He, it, well, that sounds kind of serious when you say he's not with us. Exactly. It that does. sounds kind of terminal. <laughs> but he's sick. Right. Uh, he's, he's not with us tonight because he is not feeling well, so we're going to pray for his quick recovery. But thank you for watching, and welcome to Life on the Rock. This is the Rock House. And we have a uh, great show tonight. We've got the Sisters of Our Lady of Solitude Monastery in Phoenix, Arizona. They're going to be with us tonight talking about a number of things. Among them, the Nun Run coming up March 12th, which is exciting. It you're is gonna, very exciting. You running it? Um, in spirit. <laughs> I'll be there with them in spirit. <laughs> yeah, sweating away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I told Father Mark, he and I you know, should go out and do that because we had them on last year. And uh, they said, no, he said, he said he wasn't that interested in it. But he's more of a biker. <laughs> and a, and a, yeah, and a swimmer. And a swimmer, yeah. yeah. When I say there. biker, I don't mean like Harley biker, but... <laughs> that would be a whole other story. But uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we will have uh, the sisters on in just a little while talking about the nun run and what it is as a fundraiser to help uh, continue to build the monastery and also talk about the progress of the monastery. So uh, I think you'll enjoy that. Uh, we do have with us right now on the, uh, on the phone uh, Jerry Usher to talk about his new radio show, Vocation Boom. Jerry, are you there? I'm here, guys. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing just fine. First of all, I want to say uh, my prayers are with Father Mark and Father uh, Anthony, it might be uh, providential that you're on here because we're talking about uh, an initiative that I have going to promote vocations, and you and I uh, go, go, go back a ways in terms of uh, when I was pursuing a priestly vocation, so it's good to have you here. We do, absolutely. It's good talking to you. Likewise. Yeah, uh, Jerry, Father was just talking. He was wondering if you would, you would uh, make the connection, uh, Father Anthony, to his other name that you would refer to him <laughs> when you were in household with him at uh, University of Steubenville. Uh, remember what you called him back then? Uh, Bob, I believe. Bob, yeah. no, that's not what you call me, James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was saying before we went on, it was, it was, it was a different name, but we won't, we won't get into that right now. No, no I don't remember that. Maybe <laughs> I <don't. laughs> That's good. That's good. Selective memory. No. Uh, so, but, Jerry, tell us, uh, Vocation Boom, uh, what is this, uh, what's this all about? Well, really, this goes back about 20 years, even prior to when I knew uh, Father Anthony there. Uh, I was a, a seminarian for the Archdiocese of Portland, uh, 1989 to 95, so I spent six years in formation. And I think uh, Father Anthony and I knew each other at Franciscan University of Steubenville, and then uh, I spent a year at St. Charles Seminary where he was as well. And going back to that time, a friend and I, who's now a priest, a Claritian priest, Father Darren Merlino, Father Anthony, you may know him, sure. yeah. uh, we uh, published uh, twice a year a newsletter we called In Persona Christi, In the Person of Christ, which is what a priest is. And uh, we just, it was a simple black and white eight page newsletter that we sent out around the country, really to some people around the world. And there were, uh, there were a lot of things we wanted to do beyond that to promote vocations to the priesthood, as things usually happen, though. Father Darren got busy with his uh, seminary studies and then ordination and ministry. And, you know, the Lord led me into Catholic radio. So we, we were both pretty busy, but the, the, the vision, uh, the desire on my heart to promote vocations never went away. And so, a couple of years ago, I got together with some creative and marketing people, and we decided to move this vision forward. I got the inspiration to call it Vocation Boom, and we, we launched the website in September of 2009, and just here recently uh, launched the radio show, Vocation Boom Radio, on EWTN. That's great. Now, in, is uh, EWTN, is it going to be carried just there, or where else could someone possibly pick this up from? Well, EWTN uh, Radio is the exclusive distributor for the radio show, so on all of, uh, all of its affiliates, uh, that's you know, 130, 140 stations, and of course the Internet and, and the Sirius Satellite Radio Channel on EWTN. And People will be able to find the archives on our website here eventually, but right now it's distributed through EWTN. Okay, that's great. That's great. And can you give us just a, uh, just a, a few seconds of what, what's a flavor uh, that we could be expecting from this show? Well, the first series of shows, and they're all going to be taped. I'd love to do it live and take calls and everything, but with my travel schedule, I can't do that. But the first set of shows we taped uh, with three, up to three guests per show, three different interview segments. Uh, then I, I went to a bit of a different format after, uh, after several shows where I give a little bit of a teaching or an explanation of something related to the priesthood and vocations and then have two interview segments. But we've got seminarians, family members, parents, priests, vocation directors, seminary rectors, uh, bishops, uh, lay people. Um, we're just trying to kind of come at this, uh, this whole thing of the priesthood and priestly vocations from as many different angles as we can. Oh, that sounds great. Sounds really good. Well, we'll, uh, we'll say a prayer for it and, uh, and hope it just goes gangbusters and moves a lot of hearts and souls towards uh, listening to God, tuning in well to uh, 
to know what their vocation is. Thank you. Yeah, the show airs at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific every Saturday. And uh, people can go to vocationboom.com if they want to get more information. Very good. Okay, vocationboom.com. All right, Jerry. Well, thanks for coming on and tell us about the new show. Hope it goes well for you. Thanks. Bless you guys. All right, Thank God bless you. you. Take care. Uh, also, ladies and gentlemen, I want to make mention, I've got an event coming up this weekend at Camp Gargano. We have a group of college boys coming up from uh, Benedictine College in Atchison, Kansas. And I want to make mention of this specifically, Father, because there's one young man, Greg Waddle. I'm going to mention this guy. Uh, he's a sophomore down there. And uh, I've known Greg for many years, and Greg has done a fantastic job. He's kind of spearheaded this whole thing. Uh, went down there and put the word out. He and I had talked when he was up in Lincoln, then he went back down to Kansas. And he put out the word, and he just started rallying these guys together. And he says, I want to get a group of guys and come up, and let's just go through a camp together. So here's an example, a great example of a young man, a uh, sophomore in, in college, who said, you know what, we, we've got work to do as men, and we're going to get it done. And here he was uh, out there, uh, you know, taking the bull by the horns and, and pulling these uh, group of guys together, and they're coming up this weekend. So I'm going to ask for your prayers for the uh, college guys from Benedictine College from Atchison, Kansas, coming up to Radix Camp Gargano this weekend. Are you uh, worried that you can't keep up with them, Doug? No, no, no. I'm <clears throat> not worried about that at all. Are you kidding? I, I'm in shape, you know. Boom. Excellent. Check out the gun show. Excellent. Boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was ready to go on that dumb run. Absolutely. I'm still ready to go. Someone want to sponsor me? I'll go down there. I'll run at any moment. I will. I love that, that, that stuff. But, uh, and for anybody else out there who's interested in, in setting something up at Camp Gargano, check out our website, radixguys.com, and, uh, and, and, and come check it out. Give me a call, contact us, and you want to bring a group of, of young men or, or adult men out for a retreat, uh, for training, for a weekend, for a week, uh, altar boys, youth group, uh, Knights of Columbus, Squires, you, know, you name it, Boy sure. Scouts, we'll, we'll do it all. So. Well, it'll be a great weekend, I think, the Benedictine students are excellent. Oh, they are. Outstanding place. Yeah. I agree. They really are. Yeah, we, we're, uh, Eric and I were blessed to go down and do the Passion Meditation down there last Lent, and I uh, really, really appreciate uh, how, what they've got going down there at that college. So, anyway, keep that prayer out there, folks, for the people from Benedictine. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we will have the sisters from Our Lady of Solitude Monastery in Phoenix, Arizona with us talking about the nun run, the progress of the monastery and its uh, construction, and many other things. Don't go away. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Life on the Rock with the Rock House here. Doug Barry along with Father Anthony filling in for Father Mark. So we are the Rock House compadres tonight. Got our, our back in the saddle fill in uh, Rock House compadre here, Father, Father Anthony. And we have with us two fantastic, amazing, wonderful sisters from Our Lady of Solitude. Very quiet, alone place. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It looks fantastic in the pictures. I've not had a chance to come down there. Uh, Sister Esther. Yes. And Sister Marie St. Paul. Yes. Thank you for being with us, sisters. Good to have you Thank on. You. Thank you, Doug. And you're going to you're going to give us an example of of the of the run, correct? You're going to be running around the studio here. Is that <laughs> what you're going to be doing? Sure, if you want us to. <laughs> now, the, 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 I'm sorry, I make a joke about this, but this is the nun run. It, it's a great name. Mm -hmm. It's a great name. Um, it, you just tell us something about where the name came from. Well, mainly because it rhymes, Doug. Yeah. Nun run. <laughs> it's, it's a great marketing <laughs> thing. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Um, it markets well, yeah. But I think we, we wanted to do, it was actually a good friend of ours, Donna, um, from Chicago. She's a nurse in Chicago. And um, she had put, put the suggestion to us um, because we wanted to do a fundraiser that wasn't just, we wanted to get the word out and we wanted to reach as many people as we possibly could. So obviously, our, you know, our main thing is to, is to raise funds to build the monastery, but it's also really a great way to introduce people to religious life, to nuns, mm -hmm. um, people that normally, you know, maybe aren't going to church or aren't, you know, um, wouldn't meet us in another, you know, in our normal venue, which right. would be at the monastery. Um, especially in Phoenix, people are so um, dedicated to fitness. Um, and, and because the weather is so nice, there is always races going on and always, you know, those, that's very big out there. So um, it's something people are accustomed to. 
And so um, she just, you know, she suggested it and we just, we went with it and it took off. You know, we had over a thousand runners last year and we had, you know, just a wide variety of people. We had people who, you know, were, were serious about getting good times. Um, you know, they were, they're training for either a marathon or half marathon. So it could be like a warm up race for Exactly, because that's really common to do. And we have people who obviously are, were, were familiar with us and wanted to support us. Mm -hmm. um, people who um, were curious, you mm -hmm. know, it's a novel thing. You don't really come across many nuns running, um, you know, because the sisters do participate in the race. Some well, walk and some run. Well, and that's the thing too. I mean, I, I don't know if we're, if we've got the, the photos up of this or not, of the sisters actually in the race. Yeah. They're running with right. the habits. Yeah, in, in the, the habits. habits. And I think it's 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 a it's a it's a great way of saying, you know, Jesus is fun. You know, you don't have to. We're spirit and we're body, and it's important to take care of your body as well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there is. To, I mean, there is. A, there's a moral obligation, really, right. to take care right. of the temple, the Holy Spirit. Right. You need to maintain the temple. Right. And, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's great. You know, it's great to be outside. Um, well, it's great. I, I think it's fantastic that the idea came your way and, and you all just ran with it. And uh, look where it's at now. Right. Just, you just ran with it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. uh, Sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, I wrote that one myself, my own joke. So you had over a thousand last year on this. That, a thousand runners on site. On site. Now we also have something. It's really great. There's so many people um, who want to participate but don't live in the Phoenix area. We actually had a lot of people visiting. Um, baseball spring training is there, so we have people visiting for the games and participated in the race. So we had runners from all over. Um, but we, if you don't live in the Phoenix area, you can be what's called a shadow participant. So you, we had a group. Sounds a little sneaky. If you yeah, ask me. <laughs> in the shadows. Shadow we had um, people from Florida. We had we had a shadow wow. group in Israel in the Holy Land. Wow. We had um, there's a friend of ours who was living in Italy. So her and her husband and baby in the womb ran it in Rome. <laughs> um, we had um, people in Ohio, Chicago. If I'm forgetting anybody, I'm so sorry. Um, and where? Other parts. Oh, in St. Meinrad, um, the seminary there, oh, wow, they participated. Wow. So you can you can um, register like you would if you were going to be on site. So you would just go to Desert Nuns and go to the Nun Run website, and you would register like you would if you were going to be on site. And then we will mail you a T-shirt, and you can run your race at home. You know, that, that brings a whole new meaning to the uh, term u universality of the church. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Another joke I wrote. <laughs> they're great. You no, are they're not going so well tonight, are they? No, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so what's the website again people can go to? It's um, desertnuns.com. Desert and then there's a, um, you can click on the Nun Run emblem there, and it will, we have a whole website um, for specifically for the Nun Run. Okay. Now, and, and sister, is there going to be a Nun Cam, I hear? Is it, you know anything about this? Know. You're not sure about that? I won't be wearing it. You won't be wearing it? <laughs> <laughs> but now, do both of you run in, in the race then? Uh, I run. You do? Uh-huh. Awesome. How many of the sisters, how many sisters are down there right now? Um, there's six sisters. Six. And, and how um, many participate in the um, run? Everybody usually either runs or walks. Okay. Um, uh, three of us run and um, the others uh, walk. Okay. So... Now, the, and what year is this? How many years has this been going on? This is the second annual Nun Run. Oh, it's only the second, second one. Second, right. The first one out of a thousand people. Yes. That was the, the first. Oh. Right. Okay. And, and our and big pitch is, okay, I'm going to crack a funny. Oh. You ready? Okay. It's a good habit. Oh. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I don't get it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get it. <laughs> so um, that's, our, that's kind of our um, pitch this year. It's a good Because habit. it's the second annual. And it is, you know. Now, is that is that the is that the angle that the, the motto you had last year too, or what, no, what was last year? Um, Are you can do run, a new one for each year. Run so as to run so as to win was kind of the motto last year, okay. and then this year is it's a good habit. It's a good habit. Um, and that's kind of our pitch to get the word out. Um, and the the big pitch this year is the fact that we were last year's was raising funds to build a chapel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this year we have the chapel. I mean, wow. the chapel is there and it's on site. Um, and you know, so now this is this is fundraising to um, build the monastery part. So right. this phase one is is nearing ending, and we're beginning phase two. So I think they'll be putting up pictures of the chapel. How how do you do you feel the sisters have been received down there? Uh, in the, for how long have you have the sisters been in Phoenix? We moved out in 2005. 2005. Okay. So we came from Mothers in Hansville. We started the foundation. We actually lived in Black Canyon City. And through generous donors, we had land donated to us in Tonopah, which is west of the city. And this past year, we built the chapel, which is a huge accomplishment, and it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we're now living on site, so we moved down in October. Oh, that's great. That's great. 
How's the response been from the from the people in the in the Arizona area there? Fabulous. It's been amazing. Really? You know, I grew up in Alabama, and um, the Catholics here are wonderful, but we're only three percent. And Phoenix is very vibrant. Um, you know, we have we're blessed to have such a wonderful bishop, and the clergy there are fantastic. You know, and um, the people are even though it's a very big city, um, especially space wise, it's a sprawling city. Um, the Catholics there are very connected. It's a very well um, connected. Um, culture, really, and it's beautiful. And the bishop uh, is uh, Bishop Olmstead. Olmstead, yes, yes. He used to come to my house for dinner. Yes, he mentioned you. He said did he, he really? knew you. Yeah, he said he knew you and your family. Oh, did he have anything good to say, or he was did? It all bad? He said you're a wonderful man. Oh, did he really? <laughs> yes, he did. Are you lying, sister? No, I am not lying. I would <laughs> never lie to you, Doug. <laughs> well, thank you, Bishop. Olson, I might for be stretching that. the truth a little. Oh, bit. okay. No. Well, then. <laughs> I'm just joking. He said it. No, that's very nice. I remember him when I was just a, a wee little whippersnipper, mm -hmm. and uh, he'd come over for dinner when he was oh, a parish priest over there, and he'd come over. He was he was friends of the family, and I just remember he's always just been good memories of his uh, just very even keeled right. uh, you know strong solid, solid. solid. Yeah. and it's for me personally I mean communally he's been such a father and a support um, but for me personally um, as um, a, as a person pursuing holiness he's such an awesome example mm -hmm. and inspires me to you know to the Lord it's really he's an amazing yeah. amazing, amazing priest shepherd. Mm -hmm, he yeah is. yeah well, I know in, in just a bit here, we're going to be going to uh, Sister uh, John Mark on the phone, and she's going to be um, uh, sharing with us a little more about the nun run. Um, I guess a question I have is um, the, the different lengths uh, that people can, uh, for those people watching who haven't been to the site, don't know about it, is it uh, you have different lengths, you have walk, you have run, you have... The uh, nun run... Tell us about that a little bit. The nun run is a, is a 10K run, a 5K run or w a walk. You can okay. walk that as well. And then this year we added something new. We added a one mile walk. Oh, okay. um, so that way it covers everybody's, you know, whatever, what everybody would like to do. Um, so, I mean, it, there really isn't any excuse not to participate. <laughs> it's a great, it's just a great day. It's right, a great day. Right. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I, I'd love to go to it. I really would. So I'm looking for someone to just, you know, <clears throat> Give me a new pair of tennis shoes and I'll be right down there. Uh, in fact, I see right now we have uh, Sister uh, John Mark on the phone. Sister, are you there? I am, Doug. How are you doing? Everyone. Hi, Hello. sister. Hi, sister. Good, good to have you on the phone, sister. Uh, this is exciting. Your second annual. Last year you had a thousand, over a thousand people. You know what? The Lord has been really good to us. So many people have come together to make this event, uh, I think, so much larger than we could ever dream of our own. But yeah. that's what the Lord does. He takes little ideas and... He blossoms them with his good fruit. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Now, do you have any idea what you've got so far, or do you want to talk about that, or is that all secretive right now? Like oh, for, no. for, for numbers um, that are pre-registered? Yeah, we have 103 registrations so far, and 17 of those are shadow participants. Uh -huh. And um, it's really great as the stories come in. We have just this morning a family of five registered, and they have a 15-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 21-year-old. And just having an event where a family like that is able to come participate, enjoy each other, enjoy the day, um, enjoy the venue. Um, it's, it's really inspiring. Now, sister, do you run or do you walk? I run. You run? <laughs> yeah. 10K. Now, I, you, oh, the 10K. 10K. You she's, do the 10K. She's big business. Is she competitive? She's pretty yeah. good. She's really good. She's out there clawing <laughs> through the crowd. Get out of my way. I'm coming through. <laughs> no, she is a zealous and runner, and she inspires people to okay, run. Okay, She go. really does. She cheers them on. She cheers them on. She's a cheerleader. You hear that, sister? They, mm -hmm. They're speaking well of you here. <laughs> they are <laughs> wonder novice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, sister, do you get a lot of priests in this as well? Um, yeah, actually, we have two registered so far. Um, actually, two are coming in from Washington, D.C. to run. Um, so we would, you know, it's, it's a beautiful wow. thing to have our priests be so involved in that. Um, so yeah, they, they come, they participate, and I think last year we even had a bishop participate, uh, Bishop Wall in um, New Mexico. And this year I heard rumor he's going to do it again, but he does it on his treadmill because it's still so cold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, this has got to be one of the safest races a person could run in. I mean, if, you, I if you're worried so. about your health... Mm -hmm. If you're going to drop dead anywhere in a race, this would be the one to do with the sisters around to pray for you and the priest there to hear your confession. <laughs> Last right. You work that into the advertisement, you might bring more people in, sister. <laughs> Try that out. We'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so, so then, sister, um, about the nun cam, is this true? Is there going to be a nun cam on this one? I hadn't heard of that, but I think I really like it. Maybe we can get, like, the Goodyear blunt to fly over to and... 
the, the sky is the limit. So we're working on it. That's not a bad idea. I think EDBTN, uh, they're, they're buying all kinds of things, like the National Catholic Register, I think. It, well, they didn't buy it. They took it over. But maybe we need a good year blimp, Father. Yeah, that would be great. And to have EDBTN on the side of it. MFVA. Oh, I'm yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll be flying the plane. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> <laughs> well, sister, before we would let you go, is there anything you would want to say to the people uh, watching or listening right now to encourage them to, to take part in it actually in the Phoenix area, to come to it live or to do the shadow secretive version of it? Anything you'd like to say? Well, we would, we would just love to have everyone come together in our Lord for this great event. Um, if you register as a shadow participant, we would ask that you register by February 23rd so we can actually mail you your T-shirt and your race number um, so you can have it on race day. And then we encourage the shadow participants to actually take pictures where they're at and email those back into us, and we put those up on our blog. Uh, we had some great pictures of people running in the snow last year in our eastern state, upper northern eastern state. Wow. Um, so it's easy, jump online, get all the information. Um, we had a woman call this morning. She wants to run. Uh, she's going to attend Mass, and she wants to run, but she wants to run in her skirt that she would wear to Mass so she can be in solidarity with the sisters. So I thought that was really cute. It's going to be her <laughs> 5K run ever. Um, and she, she was just excited. She's like, I have something to work towards. And that's the thing. It's such a family-friendly event. If you're a beginner, we welcome you. If, you, if you're running for your best time ever, um, it's just got that feel for everyone to feel safe and comfortable and have a lot of fun. So we hope to see everyone that's able to come to join us for this great event. That's great. That's great. Well, Sister, thank you very much for taking some time to be with us uh, on the phone and getting that word out. And uh, we'll definitely keep it in prayer. And I'm going to continue to try to get Father Mark to do this next year. Uh, I was willing to go this year, but now he's, he's pretending that he's sick even tonight. So we, I don't know. I just can't count on him anymore. I don't know what, Father, is, any advice? I could go with you, Doug. Oh, could you go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can do the one mile. Let's we'll see if we can yeah. swing this. I could kid. do the one mile. I walk the one mile. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. After I get out of the blimp. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, sister, for being with us on the phone tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, sister. Bye, sister. Bye, sister. See you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. We're going to run to a break now. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We'll be back with more from the Sisters of Our Lady of Solitude in Phoenix, Arizona, The Nun Run, and other things on Life on the Rock after this. Don't go away. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Life on the Rock. Doug Berry here, along with Father Anthony, filling in for the recovering Father Mark. Father Mark is actually battling a spiritual thing right now, ladies and gentlemen. He's sick. Uh, because that's not of God, is it? <laughs> Doug, you always put me on the spot with these questions, <laughs> these profound theological things. I mean, before the fall of man, we didn't have sickness. Right, right, right. right so right. sickness that's is actually a result of sin. Of sin. And, yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, there's, there's the spiritual, you know, side right, of it. It's right. part of the spiritual battle, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm getting at. But it at, does so. invite, you know, us to exercise charity and care. And exactly, care. exactly. Offer up your suffering. Right. Right. Exactly. Bring so good. we unite with the cross mm -hmm. and so forth. So, but we are praying for Father Mark. But uh, thank you for being with us. We had the sisters uh, from Phoenix and uh, you've been down there six years, six years now, 2005. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've been talking about the nun run. And just during the break, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to uh, a, a quasi arrangement here. Father Anthony, um, you, you said that you would be willing to fly you out there. The friars will send you out there for the nun run, but we need people to sponsor you. Okay. So if people are willing to step up and sponsor me in this run, and I'm not built like. <laughs> Not Bill. They just got a big yay from the <laughs> the producer. And the, <laughs> yay! Yeah, I'm not built like a runner. I've done a lot of weightlifting in the past. I've run a couple of, of marathons, 26 mile marathons. Oh, but that was like right. 18 years ago. Oh, you can do it. This is a great cause. So, but I would love to go out and gain shin splints. Yeah, yeah. it's a good habit. It's, it's a, a good, good habit, habit to get in, and I'll run with this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, how do we get them to? If they wanted to sponsor me, um, how do what do they, they got to do, sister? For, for anybody who would like to do this, who is registering for the run, um, Doug, you included, you can go on to Desert Nun's website, go to the Nun Run um, part of the website, and that will bring you to um, the Nun Run website. And um, there's a little, um, on the menu bar, there's a, a 
uh, category called um, Become a Fundraiser. And you can become a fundraiser and actually register your name. Then, pe then what you do is after you've registered, and it will walk you through step by step how to do it. Um, it's real. I even did it. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, sure. And then it will. It, you can then email your link to all your friends and family, and then they can donate online to sponsor your miles. Okay. Um, and then we have prizes. We have gifties for the largest fundraisers. Um, for the largest out-of-state fundraiser, you will get a hand-picked goodie basket from the nuns and wow. it will be full of fun stuff, practical stuff that you will really be able to use. Um, for the largest um, in-state fundraiser, you w can have dinner with um, four or five friends with the nuns at um, a phenomenal Mexican restaurant, Serrano's. Um, and then for anybody who raises, who's on site and who raises $150 or more, you will get the fuzziest most delicious warm fuzzy blanket with the Nun Run logo on it. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the incentive prizes and you know it's a lot of fun and we had a lot of people fundraise and that was a really um, great way of getting others involved um, you know and really getting others to um, be aware of, of our mission and, and you know and really it's a great way to talk about the Lord yeah. um, which is really the end of all our, of our fundraising and um, none runs and it's it's for Jesus. Sure, sure. So. Well, I want to challenge all the Life on the Rock viewers that they need to sponsor Doug. We'll get him out there. Maybe we'll get a friar camp to to follow him a little bit. I want to see that first prize basket sit right <laughs> here, though. All right, we'll do it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, and if they wanted to to do, if if they could, they go to the website and could they email you to say we want to sponsor, we we right. want to donate you know money. What we'll do after the show, Doug, is we'll get you we'll get you your um, page right. up, and then okay. you. Will, so when people go, it's um, when people. There's also something on the menu bar, a link on the menu bar that for be not only becoming a fundraiser, but then also making a donation. And then they would click on that, and then the list pops up, and they would click on you okay. or me. Um, and then... <laughs> or Sister Andre. What was your name again? Doug Barry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you, it's all, it's, it's, you know, it sounds more complicated when I explain it. It's just, it's real easy. So mainly it's just getting to Desert Nuns, to the Nun Run okay. website, and then you would um, look on the menu bar and make a donation. And um, it walks you through on how to okay. do that. So they, they can find. And they can do it online. You'll get my, a page, my name up there, so they'll right. be able to find it. And you it can also, if they want to, they can send donations in. Um, if they don't want to donate online or whatever, um, it's actually easier to do it online. But if you would rather, if they f people feel more comfortable to send donations in, they can send it to our address is listed on our website. Okay. Our and physical the, address. And the website again is? DesertNuns.com. Easy. DesertNuns.com. Okay. That sounds great. All right, Father. Well, here we go. Arr. I'll be training when I get home tomorrow. <laughs> 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 it's been exciting. I'll look forward to this. We, yeah, we are psyched. Yeah. Doug, that's exciting. No, I, 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 it's, it's. But these are the sorts of things that are, are so necessary. I mean, especially in our climate. I mean, is it not yeah. true with with so much, uh, you know, frustration, exasperation, mm -hmm. economic problems, and and job issues, and and problems in the Middle East, and everything that's going on right now with Egypt and and, and Afghanistan. I, I mean, it's, that's, it's overwhelming. It can really weigh us down. I mean, this is the sort of thing, can and not sister, that can really help lift the spirits. It can. It's a stress reliever. Yeah, it is, yeah, and not just because of the run, but just the unity of it. Right. It was a really to, beautiful day last year. There's a lot of fellowship, and, you know, the Lord really blessed it, and the yeah. sisters worked very hard. Yeah. It's very beautiful. And as human beings, I mean, Father, we're, we're really made, I mean, we have crosses to carry in trials, but we're really made to find the joy in these types of things can yes. bring that out, can't they? Absolutely. The thing I was impressed with is, so often when you're uh, appealing for funds, f for funds as a religious community, you know you're talking to elderly people, and we love elderly people. <laughs> but I noticed with the sisters last year such a cross-section of people. It's the, the young teenagers, the 30, 40-year-olds who want to do something, and, and they don't know how to engage the church yet at that level and trying to support something like that. And other than just writing out a check, they want to do something, and so they can really participate. I thought that was yeah, it's a an tangible idea. something. Yeah. It's, and, and and plus, let's talk a little bit about the progress of the monastery then, because that's where all the the money goes towards is to the building of this monastery. Um, and and I know we've got photos uh, of this. We saw some earlier, and and I think we've got more of the interior and such. Tell us a little bit about the progress of the monastery, sister. Well, we've built the chapel, and it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And we actually live in a house on the property, which will eventually be a guest house for laity and religious to yeah. come for retreats. And then we have a little priest house, which Father Anthony has experienced. 
and it's really lovely. So while we wait for the funds to build the monastery, we'll live in the big retreat house. And then once that we the monastery is completed, we can move into the monastery. Obviously, Doug, you like this. The little priest house was called Carroll Cottage. I was there in October when the sisters moved from Black Canyon City to Tonopah, and I was the great defender. <laughs> I was the I was the man there, their first <laughs> night there, <laughs> watching vigilant throughout the night to make sure right. they were safe. But so in the grounds with your yes, sword in one I hand, was, your rosary was, in the was, other. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Can we carry boxes. Help to unpack. unpack the kitchen. Yeah. yeah good. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Did you do any cooking while you were in the kitchen? Or? I was under the direction of Sister John Mark. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. But now, and, and is there an expected completion of everything? Is there a, or a hope for it? Or hope kind of where are we at with all that? Next five years. Yeah. Okay. The five chapel years. is completed and the consecration, um, which thankfully EWTN is going to cover. So um, the audience will be able to be present with us on that great day. is May yeah. 7th. Um, and... Um, after that, we'll, you know, we will, the, we will be open to the public, which we're really psyched about because every, all our services have been um, private because mm -hmm. we haven't had a, a public chapel of worship. Um, and it's really a great way to invite people. You know, the desert has its own mystique. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. The Lord, our Lord loved the desert. John the Baptist, there's so much of salvation history connected with the desert, um, the Israelites. And so it's a big draw. I know my, personally to, for myself, you know, I grew up in Alabama. I'm used to trees. I'm used mm -hmm. to green. I don't miss it. I don't miss, I, because the desert has its own bare kind of raw beauty. Um, and it really appeals to the spirit. And you everybody know? In, 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 in spiritual context of the desert, we all go through that right. in in one way or right. another. I mean, that's absolutely. I mean, Moses was out there for what forty years. Forty years, and he never saw the promised land. We hope oh. we're not out there that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the house. Well, you consider a guy like Moses who was so close to the Lord. Right. I mean, so close to God, right. and yet still, uh, Lord, still, God allowed him to really battle and work Lord, things out. For the Lord years. loves the desert. It's a place of battle. Mm. You know, it's a battleground, yeah, you know, where you're stripped fair. of, where right. you're stripped yeah. of exterior things and um, you learn to rely on him. It's a place of extremes. It's really cold and really hot. Yeah. And, um, you know, so there's so many um, things to really glean spiritually from it. And their chapel is so beautiful. Mm. Um, I know, I don't think the pictures are getting the interior but it's mm. really what the sisters designed mm. is stunning the chapel yeah. is a fruit ultimately of the lord and the holy spirit but it's been beautiful to be able to give expression in such a concrete way to your love of our love of the lord you know the sisters really designed and chose everything to the last detail now sisters th th there's going to be those out there there always are, mm -hmm. who say we don't need big, fancy, wonderful looking buildings like this to, to honor God. You know, we can pray to him in a desert. We can pray to him in a cornfield. We can pray to him in a barn. Why do we have to have these beautiful buildings? Um, and, you know, and, and I know Mother ran into some of that kind of criticism over building the, the shrine. I mean, why is this so important to build something so beautiful for the Lord? Well, it's his majesty. I mean, worshiping him in, in a proper setting where you can really focus on him. Mm. And it's he deserves the best mm -hmm. in every way possible. That's how we feel. And the chapel's not as, it's not really that big. It's only going to seat 150. Mm -hmm. But we really, we wanted every detail to mean something. And it's, it's incredibly beautiful. And it's, even though he's not present yet in the monstrance, it's already very special. Yeah, I, Doug, God did so much in not only creating us, but in his act of redemption. Mm -hmm that man has this uh, innate sense of trying to do what they can to return that love of God. And, you know, nothing we do can possibly match this outpouring of God's grace mm -hmm. and his love for us. But every effort that we can make, and that's what you see in these, the little churches, the big churches, you know, just this effort of man to try to respond to that, mm -hmm. you know, to give that gift back, to give him the, the honor that he deserves. Yeah, yeah, I think about that with, you know, when I, when I uh, proposed to my wife um, the first time when she said no, um, <laughs> and then <laughs> she did the first time say no. <laughs> Sad moment in my life, but, but she was right. I, I agree with her at the time. She, I didn't have a job. Um, <laughs> made things a little rough. But the second time I proposed and she said yes, I mean, I wanted to give her 
the, the one that I love on the most on this mm -hmm. earth, I want to give the best that I can. Right. You know, we, we, we men buy the nice ring, we want to give the nice house, we want to give the flowers, you know, we, we really go nuts on the day of the wedding. You know, you spend, you know, hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars on a wedding dress, and then the guy rents the tux for 50 bucks. But, <laughs> you know, we have to give our tux back. She keeps the dress, puts it in a box, pull it out years later, and says, remember, <laughs> we spent all this money on this dress. But, but, but it's beautiful, and I love all that. But we do this for people. Right, yeah. right. You know? And you know? we do it, and it, it means something. Yeah. You know, it, it means has, something. It has it says to it, it's yeah. And it's by saying to, you know, by building a beautiful chapel, um, it's saying, you know what? Lord, you are worth it. Yes, right. You are way worth it. I mean, you're worth way more than we can ever give you, like Father said, you know. And the people who, who complain or perhaps say, I can find God anywhere, they're right in one aspect. You can find God anywhere, sure. you know, but you can find him physically present in a Catholic church. Yeah. And there he is, the Lord of Lords. And even no matter, even if it's the best of best, it still falls short, you know, of his of his greatness and his yeah. glory. I think, as you mentioned, giving him the best, it, it is it is so much more about where our heart is mm -hmm. at and what we're doing we're with our heart. We're physical people, and right. we need, you know, we see something beautiful, we respond. Our heart is lifted, and so when you go into a beautiful chapel, your heart is automatically lifted to God right. to higher things. Beauty matters. Sure. Yeah, and that's a that's a great statement right there. Beauty matters; it affects us. We're affected by by the elements around us. Mm -hmm. Like when I walk into the Rock House, which is out in the wilderness, <laughs> mm -hmm. high right. up in the mountains, I mean, hidden I'm from the enemies of truth. Yeah. Well, of course, because our fire doesn't generate a whole lot of heat back there. <laughs> um, you know, and where obviously you can see that it's a clear day. I mean, we day. just came off the slopes from sure. the ski. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you are affected. You come in here, you want, you want to grab a bow and go hunt a, <laughs> an elk or something or, or a gun and shoot a deer or something. <laughs> right. Because of the environment. Mm -hmm. But seriously, the environment right. affects us. Right. There's, there's no doubt about we're it. We're physical. We're physical, physical beings. People. We're affected by spirit. sight and sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I, I agree with that. You know, giving you know, God the best. We give the best to so many other things, don't we, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to... Look at our shopping malls. Shopping malls. Beautiful sports, fountains. Sports, entertainment. Right. Sports. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love the fact that we have in our homes, people have what, they, what we call the entertainment center, center, entertainment center. <laughs> you know, I had a priest come into my, my apartment years ago and saw how the TV was set here. And I had chair, couch, table, everything around the TV <laughs> with no pause at all. He said, well, I see what's important to you in this place. <laughs> Ooh, because everything was centered on the television. And that really struck me to this day. And I, I appreciate the fact that he had the courage to say that. He said it charitably, but I mean, kindly, but he did say it. Uh, but, you know, we, we do this. We build billion-dollar football stadiums, ladies and gentlemen, for sports. We, we put hundreds of dollars into camps to send our kids to go become better athletes, to become better cheerleaders, for heaven's sake. We put all this money and time into these things which pass. Mm -hmm. But to really give it to God in a beautiful atmosphere to lift the heart and the soul to prayer is so essential, so critical. And to quote, to quote the Lord, where your, where your you know, treasure is, your heart is, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, it's, he's worth it. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I'll, I'll say this, something came to me years ago, uh, I forget where I first heard this, is that if, you, if any of you out there want to know what's most important to you, all you have to do is think about where you put most of your time, your energy, your thought, your hopes and dreams, you know, right now. All it takes is a couple of seconds for us to ask ourselves those things. Where's most of my time, my energy, my hopes, my, my dream? Where, where, where are they at? That tells us where our treasure is, what's most important. So putting all the focus in a beautiful place of prayer and honor for Almighty God says a lot to God as well as to this world. All right, we're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, we're going to talk to the sisters a little bit more about what is so important about having the religious in this world and what it means to us as a society. So don't go away. We'll be back right after this. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, Life on the Rock, the Rock House, uh, fill in the uh, uh, Rock House compadre tonight, Father Anthony, Father Mark's on the men, so we're praying for his health. Uh, and we're also uh, establishing that I'm going to be running in a few weeks, March 12th, the Nun Run in Phoenix. Uh, Father Anthony's agreed to fly me down there and uh, run. I'm going to run the whole thing. Uh, I'm not going to do just the one mile walk or anything. I'm not going to wimp it out, okay? <laughs> I may be 46 years old now. <laughs> 
We had wow. a 70 year old register for the 10K really? from, out of, I'm sorry, I think it's Minnesota, out of state. He's flying in, wow. 70 years old. Okay, well, I have to then for sure. <laughs> that should Running be a consolation. For yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to run the 10K, and you're not going to beat me, are you? you gonna... I'm running the 5K. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I All probably, right. I so hope I beat mind. you. You probably will. Actually, a lot of people will beat me because I, I, I'm going to start running when I get home tomorrow and uh, start getting in shape for this. It's so. such a, you'll be so enthused. Yeah. It's really such a great day. Well, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm also going to challenge all you people out there watching and listening to go to DesertNuns.com. Mm -hmm. DesertNuns.com. Click on the Nun Run logo. Right. And from there, they're going to have a page up. Uh -huh. It'll have my name somewhere in right. there. They'll be able to find it. Uh -huh. And uh, you can donate money to watch me suffer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's all going to a good cause. It's going to go to help build the monastery, continue to build the monastery. So uh, please do that, ladies and gentlemen, because as Father Anthony said, we want that basket here. Uh, of, of the greatest amount of donations on there. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm being told that the crew already has a pool going. <laughs> on whether or not I'll beat <laughs> the 70 year old. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. This is like a ringer. If the guy's flying in, he's good at this already. Otherwise, I he wouldn't be flying in. I think he's been running in. since he's been like five or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm up for a challenge. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. That's great. See some donations coming in, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll, we'll give it a best shot. Ah, a minute to the end. Okay, uh, sisters, again, fantastic idea, the nun run. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. It's, it's just great. It's a lot of fun. We've talked about that. But let's get to something much, much more, uh, more meaty, if you will. The presence of religious in our world as a whole. We talked before the show a little bit about this, about how, I mean, schools and hospitals and orphanages and, and, and just the real, I mean, the, the real rise of these institutions and organizations that benefit society and mankind so much had everything to do with the religious community. Right. Tell us a little bit about that, sisters. I mean, hospital, the hospital system as we know it was founded usually by, um, you know, especially, because, I mean, culture before Christ had, you know, sickness and, you know, death, it had no meaning. But Christ comes and gives meaning to our sickness, our sufferings, our death. And so from that came hospitals. You had religious communities um, that usually started really small. And their big thing was to, f to feed the poor, to help the underprivileged, things like that, which were so really countercultural. I mean, it surely wasn't popular in Roman society or um, things like that. So it really is, um, you know, sc the school system, the education system um, became, you know, became um, to having the Catholic presence in, you know, you had sisters that taught you. I can't tell you how many times when I'm out, we don't teach, but, you know, I have the utmost respect for sisters who do, but people come up to us and say, oh, I remember, you know, sister, you know, um, Imelda who taught me when I was five, you know, and it was, it's, it meant something to them. It, you know, they knew their faith. Um, the Catholic presence is 11 in our culture. And we see now um, more and more as hospitals um, become secularized, school systems become secularized, less and less there's um, religious in the hospitals and the school systems, how much the Catholic culture in, in one aspect is being lost. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, just with the culture of death, um, you know, uh, you know, having abortion and things like that was unheard of. Well, and I know that you hear the stories out there, and, you know, just to make a quick note on this, or uh, mention of this, who, you know, well, I remember the sisters teaching me, and the ruler, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, people oh, always say us. that. Someone always brings that up. Yes. And I always say, you learned obedience, though, and you learned your <laughs> you faith. and they deserved it. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I say. And they said, you know what, we did. <laughs> well, because if you think about it now, we've got a lot of problems in schools mm -hmm. with, with uh, disrespect, the teachers, right. I mean, the violence. I mean, mm -hmm. at the time that the nuns were walking around with rulers, if that happened, and it didn't happen to me. I mean, we had sisters teaching when I was in school. I got grabbed by the elbow one time by one and drug into the hallway mm -hmm. for a good talking to. I deserved it, ladies and gentlemen. I was in eighth grade, and I was... A bit, bit, bit of assassin there going on, <laughs> and I got pulled out there, and she held, held on here and wagged the finger here, but she actually told me, you can do better. Oh. I don't want to mm -hmm. see you, you know, trying to just ignore things, blow things off, and, and, and lazy your way out of this. I think, too, Doug, with the, with the Catholic approach to, um, you know, to education, to 
um, hospital system is that we don't forget the dignity of the human person. Mm. And that's what that sister saw in you. You right. can do better. Right. You know, you're worth more. You're worth the blood of Jesus. Right. Um, and you have dignity. Whether you're ill, whether you're assassinating eight-year-old, I mean, eight, eighth grader, right. you have dignity. Which only happened once, by the way. That okay. was the only time. <laughs> I got caught and corrected. I've never done it since then. <laughs> Just so you all know that. But, but don't you think, though, that if we had more sisters walking around with rulers, yardsticks, M16s, that we would actually cut back <laughs> on some of the violence in schools? I mean, now we've got kids going into some schools, they've got to go through metal detectors mm -hmm. in some high schools now. We yeah. didn't have that. I mean, what was the top 10 problems? There was a list of the top 10 problems in the 1950s to like what it is now. Yes, yeah, spit wads, uh -huh. talking in class, things mm -hmm. like this. Now it's carrying a firearm, you know, carrying knives. And I think it's uh, ultimately, Doug, I think just my own um, take on it is, I think kids are so looking for love. Mm. They're so looking for love. And even though those sisters were tough, um, they, kids innately know that when they're disciplined, they're being loved. Mm. You know, disciplined in the right sense. Um, you know, respected. respected and yeah. they're being, you know, they're being loved. And you have kids now who are coming from, you know, no parent homes, one parent homes, um, you know, who are just getting mixed up in, with things at a very early age because they're looking for affirmation. They're looking sure. for themselves. Oh. Well, and I, and I do think that for all those out there who hear the stories of the, the, the negative side, the scandalous side, the, the ruler or whatever that may have been inappropriate, there are dozens yeah. and dozens and dozens more mm -hmm. on the positive side. You know? Absolutely. I mean, Father, this is something, I mean, even brothers, I mean, not, not just religious sisters, but brothers have been involved in a lot of admission work and education and such. Sure, absolutely. And I think that's, the, if you look for the identity of the religious especially, it's just Jesus in society, um, that that's what our life is supposed to be, that we know him and we tell other people about him, that we witness to him. And you, and you do see the effect in culture that when the church is active, there's greater dignity for people. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a greater respect of women. There's a higher level of education. Um, there's civilization. Mm -hmm. You take Christianity out and you have some of the chaos we're seeing around the world <laughs> and this fear that we have in our country right now, just like this e extremism taking over that is not Christian and will not respect the rights of another or dignity of another human being. That's so true. Yeah, you think of G.K. Chesterton saying, who himself converted to Catholicism, uh, and before he even converted, had written extensively in defense of the church because he understood that the church had this this uh, this foundation that just brought order to the world. And he said that mankind would have destroyed itself several times over had it not been for the Catholic faith, the Catholic Church. I mean, it's just so the presence of religious in the last few minutes that we have, sister. The presence, I'll ask you, sister uh, Marie Saint Paul. The presence of religious. Why do you see it as so important in our world today? Well, it's like what Father said, it, we're, we're portraying or radiating Christ to these people. Now for us, we're contemplative sisters, so we're hidden. And we, we're present before our Lord and bringing to Him all of the, we're interceding for the people who come to us with prayers. Now you're hidden, but you're on a special work release right now because you're on, yes, you're on, you're on international television right now. <laughs> I miss it. <laughs> our, um, I mean, we're... It's not like we're locked away from the world, but we're, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's like we're you just... choose the, to be apart from the world. Yes, we choose to be apart from the world. Thank but you. But the contemplative life, though, sister, I mean, there's something so, so amazingly important that so many of us in society, and those who've never even heard of contemplative religious life, have no clue about that this is, it, it's, it's actually a, a great work of mercy to be a contemplative, is it not? Well, yes, the seven... Corporate spiritual, spiritual yeah. works. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in the sense that you are before our Lord, twenty-four-seven. Your your sisters yeah. are there with our Lord, praying for the world right. and, and, and even, all the intentions. even our domestic duties. I mean, the domestic because it's not like we're there individually always before Him, but the domestic things of life that we have to do, cleaning and all that, it's all done for Him. Um, everything, um, our whole lives, our being, is totally given to Him as a spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, we belong to Christ. Um, and as religious are the leaven, and we're also the heart, you know, um, especially contempl contemplative religious are the heart of the church. So we like pump blood, we pump energy to <laughs> laymen out running 10Ks, you know? <laughs> Bring it on, that's right. <laughs> we, you know, we, and we pray um, for people who, who don't even know we're praying for them, right. you know? And it's, it's to draw grace. 
well, to draw God's mercy. I will say this, sisters, there have been dozens of times that my wife or me or my children or many people that I know, something goes wrong or there's a, there's a fear or a trial, pick up the phone and call the sisters here, mm-hmm. call the Carmelites, call the uh, Holy Spirit Adoration Sisters. They're called the Pink Sisters in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, call the Contemplative Sisters. We know we can count on them. Right. And so I thank you, sisters, for being, uh, for being in that position, for saying yes and being that, that, uh, that bride of Christ, which is really the, one of the most powerful things we don't talk much about or understand is the fact that you take Christ in this, this amazing uh, spiritual union of... of uh, religious religious, religious say to the world, this world, is gr- this world is great. God has made it good. He mm-hmm. pronounced the world good. But it's not everything. Right. You know, we have a home in heaven. So what religious are now, we will all be like in heaven. You're a great reminder for, for what we have to look forward to. Even And you come from different walks, backgrounds. Mm-hmm. I know you yourself were in the Air Force, right? Yes, I was. Uh, I had to get that in there for the end of the show. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for watching our show tonight. Sisters, thank you for being thank with us. Dad. And go thank to their website, Dad. desertnuns.com, and sponsor me. I'm going to run that race. Father, can you send us off on what we need? Sure. May the Lord bless you and keep you, show his face to you and be merciful to you, turn his countenance to you and give you peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. Thank you, Father. We'll see you next week.